Today is October 12th. Welcome to Journey Church, a place to embrace the journey, live for God, love people, and serve the world. 
We are one church in two locations and would like to give a warm welcome to both our campuses this morning. If you're a guest today, welcome. We're happy you're with us today. Please take the time to take a look at the connection card in your seat and fill it out and we'll instruct you on what to do with it at the end of the service. Again, thanks for being here. This morning, if at any time God speaks to you through a sermon point or scripture, be sure to take note of it and then share it later on social networking. There's a good chance someone else needs to hear it too. And speaking of social networking, why don't you take out your smartphone right now and check into Journey Church on Facebook so your friends can know where to join you for worship. Recently, our Valdosta campus passed out bottled water at the Honeybee Festival in Hyra, Georgia. What a great way to show the community how much you love them. Also, this past week, our men and women's ministries met at our Tifton campus. Our men had a great time of fellowship, a good meal, and our men's ministry director, Travis Dowers, led a Bible study on apologetics. And our women's ministry met and celebrated with Pretty in Pink Bunko and raised over $700 to go towards making care baskets for women with breast cancer in Tifton. Make sure you don't miss out on our upcoming series called Embrace the Journey, which starts next week. We believe that this will be the series that will be life-changing for our churches. So again, thanks for being part of our service today. Remember, you can always stay up to date with what's happening at Journey as well as watch live and recent sermons by visiting our website at embracethejourney.tv. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Now, let's open our hearts and continue to worship. There is power, power here in this hour, this hour, we're all together, together, waiting here as one. There is power, power, here in this hour, this hour, we're all together, together. Waiting here as one. Come on, church, we sing this together. Say, oh, 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 hear the sound from heaven. Oh, 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 a mighty rushing wind. Oh, 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 oh we're calling for revival. God led with fire for
waiting here as one. Oh, church, where are you this morning? Do you want to know the Lord? Do you want to know His presence? Yeah, we're waiting for you. We believe there's power in your name, Jesus. We believe there's saving grace in your love. And God, we lift your name above every name. God, come on. There is power, power. Here in this hour, this hour. joining us here at Journey Church for worship this morning. It's good to be in the house of believers. Amen? Yeah. All right, come on. You can do better than that. It's good to be in the house of believers. Amen? Yeah. That's right. And it's good to be with here this morning. We want to thank you for being here. Uh, I just want to give one thing straight. You're not here to hear a band. You're not here to hear a great speaker. You're not here to be entertained this morning. We're here to worship God. So let's get serious. Let's get all this facade stuff out of the way. We're not here to be fake and put on a front like we're perfect. Because everyone who walked in here this morning, you're not perfect. And let me just, let me get that out of the way. So it's okay to be broken at the feet of Jesus this morning. It's okay to be transparent with him. It's okay to hurt. It's okay. Because when we come to God with our brokenness, when we come to God with our hurt, when we come to him with a need, that's when we experience his power. So many times a lot of us walk out of here on Sundays and like, man, nothing really happened for me. Man, I just really didn't feel anything. Well, maybe a reason you didn't encounter God is because you're the only thing that's standing in the way of you encountering him. See, we're not here to create an experience. We're not here to make you feel the Holy Spirit. We're here to experience the Holy Spirit together as the church. So open up this morning. Be vulnerable with the Lord. It's okay to be broken. It's okay to have hurt. It's okay to have fear because God speaks into those things. If you only know God in the good times, then you're missing out to, when, to everything that he really is. We come in this room and we come in to give him our worship. We lift our hands as a sign of surrender. We, we lift our voices as a sign of submission. We, we do everything that we, we can, sometimes just to check the, the checkbox off the list of going to church for the Sunday. Please don't let that be what today is. Let this be a moment when you surrender to God. Not just this moment, but every moment outside of these walls. We're here as believers to, to get energy to be pumped up to be encouraged to be brought together as a body of believers as we get prepared to go to battle outside of these walls if you're a non-believer if you don't know jesus this morning i hope today that you would experience the gospel that jesus christ our only hope came to us when we had no hope when we had no reason no purpose nothing to really hold on to we didn't deserve this. And God came to the nobodies to make us somebody. And now we're sinners saved by grace and we have the power of Jesus inside of us. And today, if you've never heard that before, I pray that God would show you that it is true this morning. 
that God would speak into your life. He would speak into your circumstances. If you're a believer and been a believer for a long time, maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're just flattening out on your walk. Maybe you need to encouragement this morning. God wants to speak to everyone in here. You're not here uh, by coincidence. You're here for a purpose this morning. So open up your ears. Give God your heart. Uh, scripture says it like this. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. It also says lean not on your own understanding. Um, so when you're, when you're in here this morning, don't, don't try to put this in a box. Don't try to put this in an A, B, and C kind of deal. God wants to move in your heart. Let him, let him do it. God, we come to you right now. We love you. We open up our hearts to you. Your name is above every name. Jesus, you saved us and we had no hope and no reason to believe. And God, we come to you right now with just a humble heart, recognizing who we really are. And God, knowing that you see who we really are. Not all these mask that we try to wear, but you know our heart. God, we lay our mask down right now. We lay down our fears, our distractions. We focus in on the cross and what you've done for us. And we pray, God, we ask, we plead with you to speak to us this morning. God, we want to know you. We want to experience you. We want your power to be real in our life. And you can do that. Only you, only Jesus. We love you, God. In this time that we give to you our worship, give to you every part of us, let our hearts be giving this morning. Let our hearts be doing whatever we can to surrender to you. As we come to this time of giving our tithe and offering, let it not just be about throwing a 20 in the plate, but God, it be giving in submission, giving of worship because you deserve it. Lord, we love you. We give you the glory this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Lost are saved, find their way at the sound of your great name. All condemned, feel no shame at the sound of your great name.
church, do you believe it? Come on. You are high and lifted up, and all Life can become boring if we forget what it's all about, if we forget why we're here, it can slip away from us. When this happens, we end up in the same old mundane routine. Letting ourselves get bored with life, with our families, our communities, with our church, our whole world. But what we don't realize is that the key to shaking up that world lies within us. Yes, revival is something that happens to a church. Yes, it's something that happens to families. Yes, it can happen to a world. But it has to start somewhere. And that somewhere is in you. Well, good morning, Journey Church. My name is Benji Rowland, uh, lead pastor here at Journey, and it's an honor to have you uh, worshiping with us this morning. Look to the person to the left or right. Take just a moment. Say, good morning. Just go ahead. Tell somebody good morning. Actually, tell three people. Find three people. Tell three people good morning. And uh, we are so glad that, that you're here. I want to take just a moment and introduce somebody to you this morning. Maybe he's a familiar face you've seen on the screen, uh, perhaps this morning in our welcome video. And this is Case Kane. Everybody tell Case hey. hey. Case it serves in our creative arts um, department area here at Journey. And I just want to tell you a little bit about that. Case is a senior in high school at Brooks County High School. And all of the videos that you see from our welcome videos, 
uh, to the video you just watched. All of that is original stuff that he has filmed from scratch from people that's within our church or our family. And uh, yeah. And so we are blessed to have him here. And I just want to give you a, a, a face to be able to put this with when you see these videos and things that we're doing. Uh, this is the mastermind behind that, and he creates a lot of that. And so, Case, we're so thankful that you're on the team, and thank you for being here this morning. You'll see him doing some filming uh, this morning. He's getting prepared for our next series called Embrace, and so he'll be doing a lot of filming this morning. He, last week he was at our Valdosta campus, and then this morning here, and he's putting a unique video together that will be next week, so you need to come back next week to see that. Thank you, Case. Um, yeah, give him a hand. Good job. And if you have your Bibles, you can turn to the book of Matthew 28, and we'll get there in a moment, as, as well as uh, several other um, scriptures that we'll look at. So if you're taking notes on your uh, smartphone or with pen and paper, or however you do that, you'll want to write these down to go back and um, look at. As this morning, we're finishing up our series called Revival, and we've been through this process of talking about revival in the heart of the individual, revival in the home. Revival in the church. Last week was revival in the community. And this week is revival in the world. And to be honest with you, in this series, this was what I thought was going to be the hardest one to prepare because I was asking myself the question okay, revival in the heart. We can see that. We can see transformation take place. Revival in our family. We can see that. We can begin to develop our kids and our. And, and work with our spouse towards having revival in our home. Revival in the church, yeah, we bring all that together and we can be energized here and see revival take place. Revival in the community, that's still tangible for us to see it within our city of Tifton, Valdosta. We can see the impact of the gospel. But the world? Have you turned on the news lately? God, are you up to date with what's going on? Revival in the world? And it was very challenging to process that and to think through what that looks like. How can revival take place in the world? And in Matthew 28, there's this scripture that Jesus gives out, and it's called the Great Commission, and he's commanding us to go out into the world. So let me look at this together, and, and we'll break this down. Uh, verse 16 and following says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of of the age. And so the scripture, he tells us, hey, I, I want you to go out. I, I want you guys to go out and impact our community and impact the world with the gospel. And what we see is from the life of Jesus to the, the disciples into the, the church in Acts, we see the gospel spread in such a way, even to the Gentiles, that you and I can even be a part of that here today as the gospel has spread. And we've seen the revival spread across that, that you and I can be revived and we can hear the good news and thankful that the message is not just for the Jews, but it's for us as well. The message is for the world. And he says, therefore, that you go into the world. He says, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. In other words, he's given you everything that you need. Look to the person to the left or right, point at him and say, you have everything that you need. Go ahead. He's given you everything that you need in order to uh, be a part of this task and going out. If we're going to reach the world, therefore, we have to have a plan. If we're going to reach Tifton, we need a plan. And what the scripture tells us in Matthew 28, here's the plan. The plan is you're a part of it. And I want you to go out and to share. There's only one way to save the world. And it's for you to go. To go share. And we don't have time to turn there this morning, but you look at the early church. You look at Acts. And, and you see how God moved in the early church and how lives were continually being transformed. And this, this gospel was like a virus. It was spreading rapidly. And people's lives were being transformed. And the reputation was everywhere about what Jesus had done and what the gospel, what the good news can do for you. And, 
and it was spreading. Paul, who was an enemy of Christians, converts. God has an encounter with him. He gets saved. Now he's out, and, and he's on the side working with the gospel, sharing the gospel. He's planting churches all over. We see life change happening. We see communities being transformed. You go to Ephesus, and you see a community being transformed from witchcraft. People in the community are getting upset because things are changing and people are getting saved. Their businesses are no longer thriving because of people's lives being changed. They're no longer purchasing those things. And so we, there's this reputation that precedes them in the church, in the, in the early church. And Paul's a part of that and he's planting churches from city to city. Him and Silas are out and they're about sharing the gospel and the, the community in which that, that's there of the worldly view is getting very upset. And in Acts chapter 17, verses 6 through 9, we find this. They were out looking, that they were looking for Paul and Silas. And in verse 6, but when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, these who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Jason has harbored them. And th- And these are all acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying there is another king, Jesus. And they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. So when they had taken security from Jason and the rest, they let him go. So they arrested them, then they let him out on bond. Um, And Jason, here he was, he was just a part of the crowd. He was a part of the group of believers. But yet they were looking for Paul and Silas. And they were known as these people who are turning the world upside down. They have come here too. They're in our city now. We, we've got to do something. They had an impact on the world. They had an impact on the community with the gospel. It wasn't just a good program, not just a good business, not just good music, not just a good, a good place to come to have a good vibe, But it was the good news that was rapidly changing people's lives. Now, recently I've I've got in the habit where in the mornings I'll turn on the news or I'll get on the internet and see what's going on around the world. And and I got in the habit of, I would do that early in the morning and then late at night before I'd go to bed I'd look and see what's going on and my wife was like you've got to stop doing that like all I mean I'd be telling her about these stories I just read about what's going on and she's like I'm about to go to bed we can't be thinking about all this I mean it's just filled with bad stuff and I realized man I'm going to start my day off hearing the bad stuff going to end the day hearing the bad I mean it's just it's bad so many things so many evil things in our world in which we live in and and people are longing to hear something good and what we have is known as the good news. It's, it's the gospel in which we have to be able to, to share. What would it look like if we had the reputation of the early church? What does it look like for people to say, that's where uh, lives are being changed. That's where marriages are being restored. That's where... You know, drunkards are being set free from alcoholism. That's where people who were on drugs are being set free from that bondage and of pornography or whatever it may be in, in your life. And, and God is working in that community and they're changing the community. Oh, snap, I heard Journey Church is coming to our community next. I mean, like, what are we going to do? They're going to change everything. That's who God calls us to be. Is a church that changes the community upside down, flips it, up, flips it over turns it upside down for the the glory of God, for God to get the glory in that, for revival to take place in our world as a whole. To have revival, the world needs a lot. It's simple. If we want to see revival expand beyond our church and our community, the world needs a lot in order to have revival. Now, I want you to participate with me for for just a moment, and I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Nobody's going to mess with you. I'm not going to walk over and tap you on the head or anything. Go ahead. I want you to close your eyes for just a moment. Those of you watching online, close your eyes for just a moment. Can you imagine a world with no light? Complete darkness. No light whatsoever. Can you imagine who 
you would have ended up marrying if you had to choose them in the dark. <laughs> Some of you are like, I might have done that. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's pretty scary. Okay, you can open your eyes. Everything that we do involves light. Everything that we're a part of, we need light. Light is essential to so many activities in our life. It's impossible to do much work with light, without light. It's impossible to go out and play a game of baseball in the, in the dark. It's impossible to go out and play a game of golf in the dark. I think some people did that last night and they had the glow-in-the-dark tournament deal. But, but with no light whatsoever, it is impossible to go out and, and play a game of golf in, in the dark. You know, reading. You, you can't read without there being some, some light. I mean, if you were going to hammer a nail into the floor, you probably would not want to do that in a dark room with no light. It just would not be, it would not be a, a, a good idea. I mean, hey, you can't cut hair in the dark. Some of you are going, that's what happened to your hair. Listen, you can't, you can't cut hair in the dark. I mean, it's not a good thing. It's not going to come out looking right. On and on and on I could go this morning. There is essentials that, that we have to have light for the essential things that we do. Our ability to participate in activity. But not only for that, but it's essential to our survival. It's essential to our survival for living. Living things on this earth depends on light. Plants, if we, uh, if we have some plants and we do not give them the amount of light that they need, if we deprive them of that, then they will wither away and die. If you take an animal and deprive it of light long enough, it will become confused and will physically and mentally weaken. You take us as humans, if, if, we're, if we're deprived of light for a long period, it can cause disorientation and depression. Light is essential to life. We need light. Which brings me to this. If we're going to see revival in our world, the world needs light. Number two is this. Jesus is the light. In other words, the world needs Jesus. Jesus is the light. John 8, chapter 8, verse 12, Scripture says, Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world, and whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And all through Scripture, we, we see this teaching in Jesus' life of him being the light of the world, him bringing light to us that, that we can live. We, we see that we need light physically, you know, here on this earth, but we also need light spiritually. And, and Jesus is the light of the world, and, and, and so we need that light. And there's several things that we could, we could go and talk about this morning about what does light do in our life. Uh, but I want us to look at just two for the sake of time. And so two things light does. Number one is this, light exposes darkness. It exposes darkness. In Ephesians chapter 8, or chapter 5, verses 8 through 13, Scripture says, For you were once darkness, but now you are a light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in the secret. Verse 13. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. And everything that is illuminated becomes a light. And so for everything, the, the light brings to reality whatever it is that's in the, the darkness the, the light exposes and it illuminates the room and it illuminates everything around it. Sometimes at night at our house when, and I think maybe I've shared this before, I'm not sure. When we put the boys to bed and they're in their room, there's a bed on each side and we'll turn out all the lights. I'll lay on my back 
And uh, we'll shine this little tiny light up on the ceiling, and we do these little puppet shadows, and I'll tell a story, and I'll get, like, like their dinosaurs out, and they'll chase these men, and all kind of crazy stuff, and I'll make up some type of story, tie it back to the Bible somehow or another. And, and, um, and so they always have a good time with that. But that one little light that I'll lay on my chest and shine up on the ceiling, it illuminates the entire room. One little light, and you can see everything everything in the room. It, it just illuminates where you can see the walls and you can see all the toys and the beds and you can see the kids and everything that's there, that one little light. And that's exactly what the Word of God should do in our heart. When we read His Word, His Word is the light into this world. He is the light of the world. And when we read it, it should expose the darkness in our lives. And I think a lot of times we are fearful of reading this because we're afraid we may find out things that we're doing that are wrong and that we need repentance from. But it exposes it all. And that's exactly what Jesus has come to do with the light is to expose the darkness. The light always defeats darkness. Always. The light always defeats darkness. No amount of darkness in this world can, can put out the light of a small candle in a room. That light will always be there as long as it's there shining. No amount of darkness can put it out. That's the power of light. It exposes the darkness in our lives and it exposes the darkness in this world and it should call us to repentance. And our world needs light to expose the sin for what it is. Number two is this. Not only with the darkness, but the light reveals our hope. It, it reveals the hope that we have. Uh, I remember as a boy, we went to Atlanta, and I, I, we went to one or two different museums, and maybe you've been here before. I can't remember which one it was, uh, but I remember going, and there was this maze that you could go through, and it would, it would show you what it would be like to be blind. And you have to get on your knees and crawl through, and you're going through all these tunnels. And what seems like an hour is only about a probably a 10-minute, five-minute deal. But you're going through up and down, and there's this little slide. You can, I mean, you cannot see anything. And in that moment, I think, is when I realized, one, I'm claustrophobic. Two, I don't like the dark. And uh, I, I remember panicking, and I'm like, surely there's lights in here somewhere. Like, if there's an emergency, there has to be lights that come on. And so I'm wondering what would classify an emergency to get the lights on and get me out of this place. I'm like, Lord, save me from the pit of hell. Get me out. I mean, it's like, get me out of this place. Let me ask you a question. How many of you in here are claustrophobic? Raise your hands. Most of the time, it's people on the end rows. You're like, I'm not sitting in the middle. I'm going to get on the end rock. Get... How many of you are afraid of the dark? Here, go ahead, raise your hand. You don't like the dark. All right, so I'm not alone. We'll start a life group for people afraid of the dark. So um, the light reveals our hope. I remember going through that, and I mean, I was literally about to panic. And finally, as we started getting to the end, I could see some light shining through. And I'm like, Lord, if you would just get me to the end of this thing, I will never enter it again. I, 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 will, I will leave this place, and you'll never have to worry about me going through it again, ever. And I remember as I come to the end, or came to the end, and the light was there, and I got out, and I mean, I'm just sitting there like breathing like, oh, I about didn't make it through that. And I think that's how, in our lives a lot of times, how darkness wants to swallow us up, but the light reveals our hope. And Jesus is our light, and we, we, we go to the light, and we allow it to expose the darkness, but it also reveals hope for us. In John chapter 12 and verse 46, the scripture says, I have come into the world as a light, listen, so that no one who believes in me should stay in the darkness. And Jesus says, I've come to provide a way. Well, you no longer have to stay in the darkness, but, but you can be brought out into light. In other words, you can be brought out into safety. You can come and I'll take care of you. I'll take care of your situation. I'll take care of everything that's going on in your life. Just come to the light. And the light, the light reveals hope. Uh, last night at the house, we were 
eating dinner outside and oftentimes on Saturday nights I'll, I'll share my sermon or share the points and I'll ask for input and I asked Braden, I was like, uh, he's six years old and I was like, Braden, can you give me a, can you give me any advice for my sermon tomorrow, what I'm going to tell the people, anything, anything I need to tell them. Well, last night we were eating outside, it was dark and we had some, some Frank Sinatra playing in the background and so we made this little romantic deal and we're all eating so I get this bright idea I go back in the house and go out the front door and I go around because it's pitch dark outside. They can't see anything. And they had been asking me about bears. Are bears in Georgia? I'm like, yes, son, there's bears in Georgia. And so I decide I'm going to pretend to be a bear. And so I walk around the side of the house and they hear me coming. And they're, they're out there and I can see Briggs and Briggs' eyes. He just kind of turns and looks at the side like, oh, no, something's about to come over the fence. And I just start growling. And Braden just starts laughing at me. Like, he's like, you, you're an idiot. What are you doing? Like, <laughs> and so he starts laughing, and so I'm like, fail. So I walk back in, come back around. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, Daddy, the light showed me who you were. And I said, okay. And here's the point. He said, here's what you need to tell the people. He said, the light showed me who you were, and I wasn't afraid because Jesus is with me. And he said, as long as Jesus is with me, I don't have to be afraid, and there's light. And he said, I could see you for who you are. And I said, okay. So in other words, I got to get back further away next time so they can't see who I am <laughs> and my next prank on them. But I say that to say this is so true. You know, Jesus reveals, through his light, it reveals hope for us and we don't have to be afraid. And we can walk in the light and know that he'll comfort us and we don't have to be afraid when trials come. John chapter 3, verses 16 through 19 we know this text. He says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Not for God so loved Journey Church. Not for God so loved Tifton. Not for God so loved Valdosta. Not for God so loved everybody watching on the internet right now. But God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. I want you to get that. He did not come to condemn. The world was condemned already. I mean, we're, we're headed towards hell without Christ. He did not come to condemn, but he come to save the world through Jesus, to come to provide a way of salvation through Jesus, that Jesus is the light of the world. Verse 18, Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and, on, or one and only Son. We were just singing about that a moment ago, about the power, the name of Jesus. Verse 19 says, This is the verdict. Light has come into the world. Jesus has come. But men loved darkness instead of light. Because their deeds were evil. And when there's sin in our lives and we know it, and there's things that we're doing that we shouldn't be doing, we have a tendency to want to stay in the darkness. We're afraid of what might happen if the light is, is, is if it illuminates our heart or illuminates who we truly are. And we're concerned about what that might mean. And I'll address that in a moment. But the light reveals the darkness and the light reveals hope to us as believers. And then lastly is this, is he sends us out as the light. In order for revival to happen in the world, the world needs light. And the light is sent out through his children. It's sent out through us. In John 17, verse 18, it says, As you sent me into the world I have sent them into the world and what Jesus was saying there is father as you've sent me here to save them to provide salvation for them I am sending them out into the world to send the message the gospel the good news to to be the light in other words Jesus didn't ask God to take believers out once they were saved but he said, hey, I need them here because they're going to take the gospel and they're going to take the message into a lost and dying world. And so he says, hey, instead of, it'd be nice when we get saved to go, bam, okay, we're gone to heaven. We no longer have to deal with this. But he says, hey, I need you here to tell other people how to overcome the same things that you have overcome, how 
how to be restored, how to be renewed, how to be revived. And it's, he uses us. And may everything that we say, may everything that we do, may every, the, everything, the way that we live our lives, may it bring glory to God. And when people look on our lives, they see the good news. They, they see the gospel being preached by the lives that we live, not by just the message we hear on a Sunday. It begins with you. When others look at you, what do they see? Do they see light or darkness? When your kids look at you, do they see light or do they see darkness? When your spouse looks at you, your spouse knows you more intimately than anyone else other than God. What shines through? Is it light? Or is it darkness? When you go to work, when you leave here and you go eat at a restaurant, are you exposing light? Or is it darkness? You're either drawing people to Christ or away from Christ. There is no neutral ground. Every day that we wake up and we live, we're either bringing people in or we're driving them away with the life that we live. And in a world, if a world walks in darkness, if Tifton continues to walk in darkness, then we're not shining because there's no amount of darkness that can consume the light. The light always overpowers the darkness. And we, as the moon reflects the sun, we should reflect Jesus and illuminate a way that people can see through the darkness and see the way to heaven to have eternal life and thinking through this message how can the world have revival God uses people like us to get the message out and we continue and continue to reach people far from God until we draw our last breath and one day hear me on this one day the world will experience revival. One day we'll all be together united in heaven and we will experience revival like none other. And in fact, in Revelation, the scripture says that there will be no need for the sun, the S-U-N. There'll be no need for it because our Father in heaven will be there and his glory will continue to shine forever and ever and ever and ever. There'll be no darkness, there'll be no night, there'll be no waiting until the morning comes It'll be day, every day. And we'll be in the light. And there'll be no sin. There'll be no sickness. And church, that's the revival I want to be a part of. But may it start with us now living our lives in such a way that we bring people with us. Because the Bible says we'll be held accountable for the life that we live now and hereafter. With every head bowed and every eye closed, Father, would you work on the hearts of the people this morning? Would you work on the heart of our church? God, may we continue to be reminded that it's not about us, Lord, but it's about your glory. God, may this not end with a sermon. God, may this not end with a series. Father, may this not end until we draw our last breath. May this not end until we see you in glory, Father, knowing that it will never end. But Father, we also know that being separated from you in eternity, if we do not have a relationship with you, and if, as the scripture says, if we do not believe we're condemned already, and we know that, Lord, when we draw our last breath without you, that we'll be eternally separated from you in darkness. God, may we bring the light to the world. May our hearts break for what breaks your heart. Lord, knowing that we need to reach everybody we can with the gospel and that you and your glory will shine forever and ever and ever and ever. And our momentary circumstances is nothing compared to eternal life with you. So, Lord, may we keep our eyes on you and may we share the gospel and may we see revival in our world. May it start with us.
tears they wept The morning sun was dead The savior of the world had fallen His body on the cross His blood poured out for us The weight of every curse upon One final breath he gave As heaven looked away The Son of God was laid In darkness A battle in the grave The war on death was waged The power of hell forever broke The ground began to shake the storm was rolled away His perfect love could not be overcome Now then where is your sting? Our resurrected King Has refuge defeated Forever He is glorified Forever going through some trials and he says here we know this text but he says here he says even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says I will fear no evil for you are with me Braden last night is like dad I'm not afraid the light shone it, it, I, I could see you and I wasn't afraid because Jesus is with me he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow, in order for there to be a shadow, there has to be light. And some of you this morning may be walking through some valleys. You may be walking through the valley of the shadow, and it's that you're in a difficult time in your life. And the word for you this morning is to keep walking to the light. Don't stay, and don't hang around in the darkness. Nobody wants to hang around in the valley. We're all going to go through valleys, but we keep walking. And so this morning, I want us to declare that before we leave this place, we're, we're about to sing this chorus. We sing hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but when I'm going through trials, when I'm going through tribulations, when I'm facing difficulties to say, God, I'm going to sing hallelujah. The Lamb has overcome. God, I, I can't do anything about this, but you can. And I want us to make that declaration this morning. We'll lift our hands, and I want us to sing. We sing hallelujah. 
Father, the Lamb has overcome. You're all powerful. You're almighty. Forever you'll reign on high. No matter what my circumstances is, no matter what my situation is, God, I'm going to walk out of here today. I may be in the valley, but I'm walking to the light because the light is revealing the shadow. And I'm going to make it through no matter what it may be. I'm going to continue to walk, Father. You're going to see me through it. Come on, let's sing together. Come on. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands this morning, sing. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, yes. We sing hallelujah, the Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah. seated for just a moment. Hey, look to the person to the left, right, and say, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Hey, if you would, take just a moment. There's these connection cards around you. If you're a first-time or second-time guest, or if you made a spiritual decision this morning to give your life to Christ, or if you're ready to take the next step in uh, baptism, uh, be sure to fill this out and place it in the basket to the right-hand side of the door on your way out. There's a connection card basket. As well as there's opportunities for you to serve, you can get connected into a ministry, fill that out, and that person that's in that ministry will connect with you and get you involved here uh, at Journey Church. A couple of things I want to share with you, and we're, we're finished this morning. Don't forget, Life Group Leaders, there is a meeting for you immediately following uh, this service this morning for a few moments right over here, just for a few moments with our Life Group Leaders. Don't forget uh, about that, uh, too. Next week is our, our new series called in, Embrace, and we're going to talk about Embrace the Journey, and we, you need to be here as we start this spiritual initiative. We'll hand you stuff, information out next week, what that looks like, what we're going to be doing in the community, how we're going to make an impact with our church. So come and be prepared to be a part of that, and part of that is this. When you leave today, out in the foyer, there's a sign that shows our floor plan. On the other side, it shows the picture of the front of our building. Uh, they've been out there working this past week and will continue working this, this coming week out there on that. But in the middle of those two pictures out in the foyer, you'll see uh, a 24-hour prayer service that we're having in two weeks. And what we need for you this morning is this morning or next week to be sure to sign up for that. And we've done something similar to this before where we'll have prayer on the property for 24 hours from on October 24th, that Friday, from 12 o'clock at lunch until 12 o'clock um, Saturday at lunch there will be prayer um, out there on uh, the property and so we're asking for people to sign up for 30 minutes or an hour at a time 
uh, guys listen especially at night uh, we need some guys that will step up to be at, to go out there at night and be uh, a part of that and we just believe that's part of God what God's going to do and preparing us for what he's going to do in our community and so be sure to sign sign up for that and you can see where that is out there and we're just excited be sure to be here next week I'm going to let Pastor Austin share one thing about the new series that they need help from you and then after he shares that you guys are dismissed and we love y'all spend time with your family and we'll see you next week sweet so on behalf of the creative team I just want to uh, express how excited we are about this next series about what's coming um, we have a stage design that we're really excited about but we need your help um, and so this is me coming to you, asking you, um, and begging you to be a part of this because you don't want to miss this. It's going to be really cool. So get out your phones, get out your notepads. Um, you have some homework for this week that I want you guys to do. Um, and next week, do not forget um, that you're going to have to bring something with you to church next week and that you're not uh, going to want to be, not want to be a part of that. You're going to want to. And so um, here, here's what's going on. This next series is called Embrace. Uh, I'm not going to give away the details of what's going on because we're going to be talking about it. But um, one of the things that we're asking you as our church to come together and do is write out a testimony about how God has changed your life and used journey to do, be a part of that. Um, write it out on note paper, type it up, however you want to do it. I'm asking everyone in this building right now to be a part of that, no matter if you've been here one Sunday uh, and God spoke to you today or whether you've been here for three to five years. Um, I want to hear, we want to hear what God's been doing in your life, what God's done in your life, and what God's using Journey to do in your life. And so next week, next Sunday, during the service, there's going to be a point in the service where you're going to bring those pieces of paper to the stage and put them on the stage. Um, and so you or you're going to want to be a part of that. I promise you there's something we have very, uh, really, really cool plan to do with those. Um, if you don't want to put out your name on it, don't put your name on it. But um, we would love for you to, to open up about what God's done in your life, what God's uh, saved you from, what he's doing in your life, um, and how Journey's being a part of, of that story, um, of your story. So that is me asking, and I'm hoping you're going to come through for us um, and do that. I promise you you want to be a part of that. Um, but that's all I have to say. So next week... Remember to bring that with you, uh, type it up, write it up, whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter what color paper. Uh, we just want to hear what God's doing in your life. So that's that. You guys have a great week. God bless you all, uh, and go change the world. I can fake it on my own, but I